Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Mint Cooperative by Brian Lewis and John Gilmore. In Mint Cooperative, you're playing as minty fresh superheroes trying to defend the town of uh, minty freshness. And you're going to be basically trying to stop trouble from occurring because when trouble occurs, panic ensues. And if there's too much panic in the town, you're going to lose. Uh, additionally, you'll be having super heroic feats, super special powers, and special feats you can occur based on the different bad guys. You're going to be fighting against people like, uh, let's see here, uh, the Gorillic and Ginger Vitus, as well as Nick Oteen, three dastardly evil villains against Minty Freshness. And it's a die rolling cooperative game. You're going to be rolling die, selecting the die based in turn order to do specific abilities to protect the town from suffering too much panic. If you can successfully accomplish three mayhem cards without losing the game, you're going to win. However, if uh, the by before the third mayhem card pops up, if the panic if the town has too much panic, the panic meter has gone to the full front. You're going to lose. The game plays two to five players, takes about a half an hour to play, and it's for ages I would say probably twelve and up. Let's go ahead and take a look down below at the game Mint Cooperative, and I'll show you how to play. So here we have Mint Cooperative and everything included in the game, and it is set up for four players, but you can play up to five if you'd like. This is the town, and it goes from top to bottom, one, two, one, two, and one. You're also going to choose a villain. We're playing with Nicotine, but you can choose Ginger Vitus or the Gorillic if you would like. Set aside the other two players, you won't be utilizing them in a four-player game. And then also make the trouble deck. The trouble deck is going to be based on taking and placing down mayhem cards. And there's going to be three of them. So you'll form stacks of four cards plus one trouble and shuffling those four cards on top of each other. So there should be three decks, shuffle one on top of the other on top of the other. And that's going to form your trouble deck. The rest of these trouble cards won't be used unless specifically stated by some of the villains. Otherwise, you can go ahead and move them away from the box. You're also going to place the uh, panic track and have this little red token on the number based on the bad guy. And Nicotine says you're going to place him on four, so that means you're going to place the panic level starting at four. This is a reference card that states what you can do with the die roll based on the numbers and or pips. And then set aside the extra event little mints here and the basic mints you'll be utilizing for the town. These are all the panic spaces on the town. Set every single town up with three mints and these are going to be the basically panic require uh, the panic amounts of each of the townsfolks in the specific area. Place your characters down in their specific colored location, as well as making sure that everything is facing north, including the trouble cards, which will be facing north as well. Deal out one stunt card for every player, starting with the first, first player going to the third, and then leave the stunt deck somewhere near the players. They're each going to get a specific player uh, reference, as well as a player character card that will have a specific passive uh, or active ability that you can go ahead and utilize, provided you actually manage to get your uh, heroic feet up by rolling the die. Then roll all four of these die here, and you're ready to go. The first player is simply going to go ahead and choose one of these die and activate an ability. These are the abilities right here. For one uh, pip, it's going to let you drop one mint down in your specific area. Two will let you drop two down. A run in mint will let you move from one space to the next in an adjacent space and drop a mint down. Flying and reducing panic will let you fly anywhere on the board and reduce the panic level down by three. And then you have the heroic feat, which is your specific character ability. And then you have the special, which is actually going to be located on the boss's character. And this one lets you reduce the panic by three. The only other thing you can do is stunts. And stunts have a specific number as well. In this case, all three of the characters have threes, and you can utilize them if you, if you draft that specific die number. So let's go ahead and begin with Fantastic Freshman, and he can go ahead and use any of these die and place them uh, and, and choose one to place on his character. So let's see, what does he want to do? He is currently right here, and he maybe wants to drop two mints. So he'll take this two here, and he'll place two mints down on his specific player area of the Freshness Falls. The next player will get to draft as well, and there's a four and a six to choose from. The four will let you fly and reduce the panic by three, and uh, the six is going to let him utilize the specific special, which is going to be a cold turkey, reduce the region by three as well. So he kind of doesn't have too much of a choice as far as what he has to do. I guess he'll just take a four, and he'll use the ability for fly and reduce panic. So he will fly over here, and then he'll reduce panic by three. One, two, and three. 
And finally, the next player gets to choose. And I guess he'll also choose the four, because flying and reducing panic is better than just simply reducing panic. So this guy, maybe he'll fly over here, I suppose. And then he's going to reduce the panic by three. But remember, it can only go down to zero, so it'll just stop right there. After everybody has used a die, there's only going to be one left. And when that happens, that's going to trigger the trouble phase. All of these die are going to be removed over here. All of the stunts that were used or not used will be discarded. And then three new stunts are going to come out based on the next starting player, which will be red here. And then yellow will get a new one, and so will gray over here. Whenever this deck runs out, simply reshuffle them all and deal them out once again. And that Citizen C Cinnamon, or Cinnamite, is going to be the one that starts first for the next round. Then have that player roll the die and determine how much trouble you're going to be in. So the first thing you check is, is there a die over four? And if there is, that's the first trouble. Then, is there any triples? Which there isn't. Is there any doubles? There is. And then that will determine how much trouble you're in. So there's single, double, and triple trouble, basically. If you manage to get all three things, so for instance, if you've got something like this, there is at least a die over four, then you have a triple and a double, that's three troubles. But otherwise, in this case, it's simply going to be two. And double trouble is pretty simple how it works. It tells you resolve two trouble cards. So we'll start by flipping over the first one. This says that you're going to remove one mint on each of the spaces and make sure that north is facing forward. So one, that removes one of these, which means whenever one of these, these little symbols here, panic symbols, gets revealed, Panic is going to ensue on this track here based on the amount of revealed panic on that specific city. So in this case, it'll just be one. Then blue will remove one. Now that reveals two, so that's two more panic. And then red will reveal one, which is two more panic. And then this one over here, another two. Oh my goodness, that's pretty crazy. And then this one here is another two. Ooh. And then this one over here, nothing. And this one over here, nothing. So that removed one from every single space location on the board. Then we're going to do another one. Oh no, mayhem! When mayhem ensues, you're going to give the track plus one panic for every revealed panic symbol on the board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's going to go from nine all the way to twenty. That pushes that thing way high. If you can get the third mayhem card revealed without losing the game, that's how you're going to win. Then, once again, we're going to start with the red player. He's going to go ahead and select one of these four symbols here and determine what he wants to do. Now, he actually has one that has five, which reduces panic by seven, so he'll probably use that one, which will reduce this by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we're going to have the fantastic freshman go. Now, there's the options of one and three. Uh, one is going to be putting a mint down, and three is running and putting a mint down. So in this case, this guy here will probably, hmm, he'll use a three, which will let him run and place a mint. So move and then place a mint. And then the gray is going to also run and place a mint. Then once again, it's going to trigger the end phase of it. There's gonna be one die left. These will get moved off. These three are going to get removed. You're going to then place them down with the next first player beginning one and two and three. These are the decks now out. So you can go ahead and shuffle these guys up if you want. So you can go ahead and utilize it for the next phase of the game. And then let's go ahead and ensue trouble by rolling these die here. We roll the die. Okay, do we have one die over four? We do. Oh no. Do we have a, a triple? Yes. And a double? Yes. That's going to ensue a triple threat, which is resolving two trouble cards. Then remove one action die from the pool with no effect. Wow. That that's no good so we'll lose this one here and then we're going to cause more trouble here and that's simply going to remove three from a single space over here which removes all these guys here that instantly procs doing two one and two and then we're going to do one more here as well which is going to remove three from this space here and then another three is going to pop on this track here one two and three and that's the basic idea of the game. Players are going to keep going, and hopefully by the time this deck runs out and the third Mayhem card resolves, the players are going to successfully defeat Nicotine. But otherwise, if this little track here gets to the end, the players are going to lose. Panic will ensue in the minty freshness town, and uh, you're going to have to try and play again in the game Mint Cooperative. Okay, let's come up and talk about it.
So let's talk about Mint Cooperative. And the first thing to say about all these Mint 10 games is that they're generally gateway games for all the unique and interesting mechanics that you'll see in the big board games. They're also travel sized. This is the cooperative variant of the, I think it's the third in the series now. They had an original one, which is the worker placement, and then they had a pickup and delivery, and now a cooperative game. This game is very, very simple to learn, very, very easy to teach, and it's quick to play. It provides enough vari variability based on the different trouble cards that can be activated as well as the different stunts that can pop up during your turn in which you're going to be utilizing them in some way shape or form and then they also have different villains that will do different things in the game some of the trouble cards will have specific event tokens and stuff like that that you can utilize for instance let's look at one of them here ginger vitus additional setup it says set up the event deck and the event tokens move the event token to the little cloud town if there are any heroes there, they become captured at the start of the hero. Any hero's turn, they must discard a die to skip the rest of their turn. So basically, that character, that, that bad guy, can slow heroes down with the little mint tokens based on the trouble cards. And the trouble cards will just have that little event token symbol down there. So it plays the same. It functions the same way, but it plays differently based on the bad guys that you're playing against, as well as that they all come with their own unique amount of trouble and or panic that is associated with the different bad guys. Some are definitely more difficult than others, and so it can become a little bit more of a strategic based game. Now, this game can be played solo as well. There's no reason why it can't. And when you're playing a two player game, just simply set it up as though you were playing four players and have each player play two characters. It won't, it won't make a difference. Uh, rolling the die and then selecting which feats and what's not that you want to use can sometimes be very, very nice and feel like you have a lot of options. And sometimes, based on what you roll, it can be very downright mean because, in general, when you have trouble happen, usually it's because you have, or triple trouble, it's because you have triples and at least one die over four. And when that happens, you have very limited choices because there's two different types of die you can choose from. And sometimes your stunts might not be the numbers you want them to be. Uh, and when that happens, you're in a little bit more trouble, of course. So you want to have the biggest sprawling different like set of numbers that you can choose from so that you can kind of elaborate with your teammates that I'll take this one, you take that one, and you should take that one. Now, because that's that being said, there will be a little bit of the alpha gamer telling everybody which way to pick and what one to which one to choose from. And to get rid of that, I simply would say don't say anything during this game. Don't don't speak. That would be my little secret caveat as to how you would avoid the alpha gamer choosing what to do. You're simply going to be able to select the one that come on your turn based on what die you have available and how you choose them especially that's an also a little bit of a difficulty increase in the game as well overall this is a fun little game it's cute it's got a really nice theme and it fits really well it feels like you're moving around the town you're flying around the town you're using your special abilities all the characters have cute little references whether they be citizen cinemite or the super spear or fantastic freshman or even liberty licorice they all have unique little names that involve minty freshness and of course being superheroes is always fun in a game especially a little cooperative game like this one overall another solid title from them i like this one probably as much as i like the worker placement variant i really really enjoyed the um different the ability to play it wherever you want anytime you want and of course the fact that this game comes in this cute cute little mint tin this game's gonna look really really excellent and it's gonna be cool to have all the different little mint tins kind of shown off in my collection game i'm definitely gonna keep gateway game that i think most people will enjoy definitely take a look down below if this interests you for me a solid little cooperative game fun gateway simple in nature if you're looking for something a little bit more deep in strategy or a little bit more complex, maybe something like Fires of Eidolon or even Forbidden Island might be something of a choice for you. Uh, but if you want something simple, travel size, and easy to understand in a cooperative format, this game is definitely one I check out down below in the description. Mint Cooperative, a freshy, cute superhero game. It's good. You'll like it.